Hello, 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 and welcome to the Academy of Useless Ideas. Now, let's kick off this video with an old joke that only mathematicians would appreciate. Have you heard that the one of the topologists who can't tell the difference between a mug and a donut? Yeah, we don't blame you if you didn't find that hilarious. Let's face it, most mathematicians are better at crunching numbers than cracking jokes. But the joke is actually quite insightful because topologists are interested in studying continuous transformations. And since you can smoothly morph a mug into a donut, don't ask us how, these two shapes are considered the same in the topologist's world. This raises the question, what defines sameness between two sets and their continuous transformations? Let's dive into the topic of open and closed sets to find out. Ah, the age-old question of what makes two sets equivalent and their continuous transformations. It's a tough nut to crack, but we'll give it a shot. Luckily, we can stand on the shoulders of mathematical giants and pluck the ripe fruits of their contemplations. We know that continuity is linked to both sequences and open balls, so we'll take a generalized approach to based on the later. But before we delve into that, we need to classify points in metric spaces. Now, you might be thinking, what's the point of that, pun intended? Well, fear not, dear viewer, as this seemingly arbitrary detour will soon make sense when we connect it to the concept of continuity. Let's get down to the business and start classifying points in metric spaces. Consider X a subset of a metric space S, we say that a point X is an interior point of X if there exists an open ball centered at X that is entirely contained within X. In other words, X has enough wiggle room between itself and the boundary of X. It's worth noting that X must also be an element of X for this definition to hold. On the other hand, we call a point S a limit point of X if every puncture ball around S intersect X. A puncture ball around S is simply an open ball centered at S with S itself removed. Visualize a limit point as a point that's hovering dangerously close to X or its edges. To get a better grasp of these concepts, let's apply them to two subsets of the real numbers. First up, let's consider a set A of numbers strictly greater than 0 but less than or equal to 1. Notice that every point in A except for 1 is an interior point. That's right, every point has enough wiggle room to fit inside A. On the other hand, every number between 0 and 1, inclusive, is a limit point of A. Even though 0 isn't technically in A, it's still hovering dangerously close to the edges and can't be separated from A by a puncture open ball. It's like they are bound together by a magnetic force. Let's look at another example to solidify your understanding. Consider the set of real numbers of the form 1 over n when n is a positive natural number. This set has no interior points because no ball can fit entirely inside it. However, there is only one limit point and that's 0. Even though 0 isn't technically in the set, every puncture ball around it intersects the set. It's like no matter how hard 0 tries to avoid the set, it cannot. Alright, now it's time to define open and closed sets. An open set denoted by 0 is a set in which every point is an interior point. On the flip side, a closed set contains all of its limit points. Interestingly, open and closed sets are intimately related. In fact, a set X is open if and only if its complement is closed. To prove this statement, Let's assume that X is open and X is a limit point of X's complement. Because X is a limit point, every open ball around X intersects X complement. This means that X cannot be an interior point of X, and hence, it is not contained in X. For the other direction, assume that X's complement is closed and let X be a point of X. Since X is in X, then X is not a limit point of X's complement. Therefore, there exists a puncture ball around X that does not intersect X's complement. This means that the ball is completely contained in X. Since X is not in X's complement, we conclude that the ball is completely contained in X, and hence, X is an interior point. This shows that X must be open. 
It's helpful to think of open and closed sets as duals of each other. Everything you can say using open sets can also be said using closed sets. Moving on, we can make our lives easier by introducing some new notations. Let's denote the set of interior points of x by int x. Think of int x as the cozy, comfy core of x. It's the place where every point has enough room to move around and feel at home. Not only that, but int x is also an open set, meaning it's surrounded by a welcoming open embrace that extends infinitely in all directions. And here is a fun fact, int x is actually the largest open set contained in x. So if you want to make your set as spacious and airy as possible, int x is your go-to destination. On the other hand, let's denote the set of limit points of x by x prime or as I like to call it, the where x and the world collide set. These points are the ones that are so close to x, they are practically touching it, but not quite. Think of x prime as the borderland between x and everything else, the gray area where things get fuzzy and undefined. Interestingly enough, the union of x and x prime forms a closed set which means it's surrounded by a solid, impenetrable wall that shields it from the outside world. We call it the closure of X and, as you might have guessed, this set is the smallest closed set that contains X.